Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to make this little video here as a little run through for the new friends of mine that have gotten Elite Dangerous recently. Uh, Dennis, you know, Mestizio69, and uh, Magic Fingers, and even RVR, which I don't know how familiar he is with Elite Dangerous or if he's ever, you know, had a chance to play any of it. But, so we're going to break it down pretty, just going to make it easy for, you know, as easy as I can anyway. Looking up at this menu here, if you notice, this is the comms menu. So that's chat for anybody who might be that the first one is like local chat, right? So anybody who's in this system, living or whatever, you know, they can see anything that you might type. This is basically your multi-crew setup or wings or whatever the case may be. If you have a friend that's online, they're going to be in this particular tab, the second one over. That's usually your incoming stuff. It'll, it'll light up if you've got something coming. This is just the action reports, you know, basically what you've done. Normal messages that you get from stations and, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> Sorry, why was irritating me. And then of course, I have everything turned off at the moment, but I should probably turn that shit back on in case zero comes out. But this is basically how you can mute, unmute, if you're recording and you don't want to hear something twice. Okay, this is your ship's info. So your ship's going to give you the time, it's going to tell you what star you're going up to, damages that may have happened, it could be a million things that you'll see come across here, but this is your ship talking to you. So basically that's your info section, that's comms. This is the helm. Helm will let you do things like launch your fighter, launch your SRV, give orders, etc. This is your basically your interface to do things with your ship, to actually do functions, etc. So this first one is your status, which tells you how much it costs to rebuy your ship, how much money you actually currently have. As you can see, I'm a blue collar worker. I don't have a lot. This is the modules. So this is a bit advanced. It took me a few, a little while to learn it, but if you have questions, I can help you. If for some reason, when you pull out your weapons, it says power plant exceeded and like your, your life support turns off, it's because you've exceeded the power usage of your, your reactor. So if you look at this, see how that one's on two? A lot of these are on one because this ship has a massive power reactor and doesn't really have a problem with power. But like cargo hatches on three, things like that. The things you want on one are gonna be, uh, let's see, doo -doo. thruster, shield generator, your weapons, the vehicle hanger, we'll just go ahead and put that on four. Shield cell bank, we can leave that. We'll put it on, we'll just put it on priority two. Multi cans will stay on one. Power distributor, definitely on one. So cargo hatch, that's on three. Frame shift drive, we can put this on two or three even. I say two, two is probably the better. Life support, that should be like one. <laughs> Fuel scoop can be a three. Sensor, same three. Fighter hanger, that's a one. Heat sink launcher, one. Electric countermeasures, same thing, one. Cockpit canopy, I'm not gonna mess with that anyway. I don't see any reason why you would wanna blow the canopy, so. But uh, power plant, definitely, you know, these are, when you get down to the bottom here, you can see these are the things that are not adjustable. So they're basically system stuff. Fire groups, okay. Each fire group is its own fire group, right? So now that I'm on, I'm currently on three, which is just my sensors. So now when I pull my trigger, my guns don't come out because it's just my sensors. I'm also in frame shift. And oh look, we discovered a new object. That's my, my uh, discovery scan. But let's do this. What a pain in my ass. It's because this button is attached to another. Let me jig it. I don't think I can actually access my. Uh, weapons and shit anyway. There we go. That should be it. Yeah, I can't access those when I'm in frame anyway, so. But here's the other thing I wanted to show. This is how you use fuel scoop. You see this orange halo that's coming off of the star? 
That's where we're going to get our fuel from. We're not going to get it from inside the star. You get too close to that thing and it's going to roast your ship. All right, so we'll move at it. Wait till the scoop turns on. There it is. We'll slow it down a little bit. And look at that. So I am staying here, keeping space in front of me and the star over my head. I can gently move speed, and if you notice, if I go a little bit faster, I'll pick up more speed or pick up more fuel. Right? Personally, I don't like to push too hard because if that gets over 67, you're fuel likely to run complete. out of, get knocked out of frame shift and damage your hull badly. So, when you're fuel scooping and you're done and you want to jump to the next scar, star, you wait till you turn that, that till it turns off. If you do not wait till it turns off, you will overheat your ship and it will cause hull damage when you get to the other side. Frame ship drive charging. Meaning you're going to end up having to get it repaired before you go into combat. Don't want to go into a combat zone with weak, you know, weak armor and weak hull. Heat also damages your modules, like your guns and your engines and stuff, which will cause them to perform badly. Like, this is a simulator of owning a spaceship and actually being in space. Like, it's just, this is not a game for idiots. Let's see, here we go. I'll hit it with a scanner one, so I, hang on, let me scanner, there we go, right up the scanner. The reason I scan these is because I, when I get to the other end and just land in a station, I can sell the data that I get from jumping across the galaxy and scanning it. And it, and it usually, I mean, explorers can make a lot of money doing that. Explorers also go batshit crazy and start peeing in jars all Howard Hughes too, but you know. Forgive me if some of you don't know that reference. He's a very intelligent man that uh, went a little bit nuts. That was the best of us, I reckon. Alrighty. Man, I don't give a shit. Frame shift drive charging. I'm going to another community goal. The reason I like doing community goals is I can bounty hunt, turn in my bounties, and when the goal is over, I get a bonus for assisting in a system. Well, when I get there, I'll show you how that works. Three, two, one, engage. Boom. I could have one or two more jumps to go. Definitely two jumps at least. Yep, two. There we go. So again, fueling, back off the throttle, stay just on the edge of this orange glow. Don't let it go over 67 on the heat. I don't need all this fuel to do two more jumps, so I'm just skimming. I'm going to power up, pull away from the star. As you can see, I gain a little bit as I do that. Jump. You'll get pretty good at timing that to where you can swing in, get fuel, jump, swing in, get fuel, jump. If you are in a small ship, do not leave a fuelable star until your tank is full. I repeat, do not leave until your tank is full. You will run out of fuel. 72% of the stars in our galaxy are brown dwarfs, which you cannot get fuel on. There are fields of them that are 10 and 20 stars long. game does not care, it does not give you any mulligans, you will simply die in the vacuum of space. Or you'll have to call the fuel rats or get somebody like me to come and help you. I don't know why I'm fueling because I, I got one jump to my target. So. And drive charging. I normally edit all this shit out. It's the boring part that most people don't want to watch. <clears throat> but for new players, I think you probably need to see. No. It's work. You gotta jump. Like I had to do 11 jumps from my last goal to this one. 
batch 11 is no big deal. I mean, I've had to do 50, 70, even 100 to the so. You know, back when I had my Aspen when exploring, I went out to the outer edge of the galaxy and uh, scanned the system real quick. Alright. Local station and we go to... Which one is it? My life support, Office 2... Ah, oh, yes, there's an extraction site here. We're going to make a ton of money. Do, do, do. Is it Tyler's survey or. No, it's not it. A couple of resource sites in here. Savory Gateway? Is that it? No. Huh, there has got to be a fucking station here that's big enough to sport something like because I don't even want to bring Zero here because his ship won't actually be able to do anything here. All right, let's look at what this says. So we're restoring order. Got four days to do it, and I need to go to do do, -do Palapta Orbital. Okay. go walked right past it alrighty and okay so here's here's the other thing right I'm looking directly at it see that the hologram of the space station and then my radar here and that little target thingy there and the little, right how I'm moving the and you see the blue dot if the blue dot is solid that means your target is in front of you I'll show you what happens when it's not if I rotate myself around here to do now it's behind me and as a result, it's hollow. So there you go. Now you know how your navigation targeting system works. So we basically put ourselves dead on money, full throttle. <coughs> Excuse me. That's really cool too. The farther you get away from the star in the system, the more colorful space becomes. Uh, here we go too, guys. When you get down to 10 seconds, I say 10 for new players, but you can do it at 6. 10 seconds, we back it down to about 75% throttle, then we'll bump it up a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. To get, uh, you know, just to speed us up a bit. You just don't want it to drop below 5. If it drops below 5, you're going to do the loop shape. Meaning you're going to fly past the star, have to realign and you know, try again. Or fly past the station. Whatever, whatever you're targeting. And if you look at here, right? So look here. It says distance. The blue bar is when you're safe. The blue speed, the blue bar is when it's safe, basically. Both of those need to be in alignment before you can drop out. Otherwise, you'll 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 damage your hull. Or you'll drop out fucking millions of miles from your target. Cool guys, giant. <coughs> Jeez, man, my throat itches. I haven't talked this much all day. But as we get closer, you should see those speeds slowing down. Now what's gonna happen is right there where my pumpkin is, see his head bobbling? Right there where my pumpkin is, it's gonna say safe disengage ready. Do not push that button until it says safe disengage ready. Otherwise, again, you will damage your hull. You will be miles and miles and miles away from your target. There we go. Just about there. Safe disengage ready. See? And voila, space station. All right. Now, I think that planet's over here. Yeah. Delay scene Golf Oscar Papa. Comms link established. Please approach the station at a safe speed and give way to larger vessels, Commander. Now, when you come to a station, just a little help trying to find the door. It's usually facing the planet or star or thing that it's orbiting. There are a few exceptions out there, but they're usually pretty easy to figure out. The Imperial stations tend to be uh, 
like long stations so you know which end's which. But these like Dungeons and Dragons looking dice things, not so much, man. They're a little trickier to uh, deal with. So to get confirmation, we go to contacts, the station, request docking. There we go. Permission authorized. Set down on landing pad two zero. Let's move in. Now the speed limit here is 100 kilometers per second, or 100 meters per second. You can come in fast if you want to. I've gotten fined. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just get pitched at. But uh, really, man, I just try to follow the fucking rules anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I'm not a fucking coward. 1,000 meters from touchdown. So 20, 1,000. That means that bitch is right next to me. Yep. These are the ones that fucking aggravate me the most. <laughs> don't forget, landing gear. Don't worry, they'll remind you if you don't. Landing gear deployed. I'm crashing! No, I'm not. Here I'll... Self lined up. And... Bing! We're there. I'm gonna use my down thrust. Alright. So what I'm doing here, <clears throat> first... The reason I'm landing here is if I get blown up, I don't want to do 11 jumps again. And it's entirely feasible that I could get blown up, so... Sorry, I gotta fix my line. I'm just gonna take an hour. There we go. Okay. Alright, so what I'm doing here is called a community goal. <clears throat> So I'll go to Starport Services so we can give you a bigger picture. And we'll go to the mission board. Let it load. We aren't worried about any of that stuff. We're going to scroll over to this side over here, all the way to the top. Community goals, two at this station. All right? So we, I'm already signed up. But if you're not, you need to choose it. And then down here, we'll scroll down at the bottom, it'll say sign up. All right, I've already signed up, so I'm good there. Do not turn in your bounties until you sign up. Otherwise, none of the money you turn in here will go towards the goal of this, this community event. <clears throat> the reason that I do community goals, quite simply, is that uh, you get a fat bonus for doing the job you wanted to do anyway. Like, I like bounty hunting, it's my favorite thing. And this station right now is paying fucking big bonuses for people who turn in bounties. So, I will go back out. Actually, let me check something really quick. Can't remember what my loadout is. There's my big girl. Alrighty, utility mounts, shield booster, shield booster, electronic heat sink. Okay. And we gotta go to core internal. Anything there. Nope, we're good there. Optional, this is where shit goes sideways sometimes. Shield good. All reinforcement good. Fighter good. I will do this. What I do when I come to these stations a lot is I will store my equipment. So I store that. Don't need this fuel tank. We will store it. Okay, fuel scoop, you can store that too, because I'm not going to need it to jump around inside the system. Whoops, that's not what I meant. Fuel scoop, transfer, store. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is, all these empty slots, first one, our shop, boom, hull reinforcements. The biggest, baddest motherfucker I can find. All reinforcement. Okay, some people say you don't need to do this. Some people say you should do this. Now with this three, what I'm going to do is a module reinforcement. And what that does is basically gives your things like your shields, your guns, and your engines a little bit of extra oomph when, if, when or if they are damaged. Now if you, you can see right here, I don't have a power problem with this ship. Still, I have plenty of room to go. So, 
I did bump my light years down a bit by adding all this extra weight, but I brought my hull integrity up over 1,050, so that, that's, you know, or 1,500. So that's pretty good, because when I came in here, it was around 750. So now, if my shield goes down, I can take a little bit more of a beating to finish off the asshole that I have to deal with. So, all right. Now, do, do, do resource extraction site. Hazardous. I don't do hazardous without backup. That's just ignorant. It's just ignorant. Not to say that people can't do it or be good at it. I just... Fuck that. <laughs> Alright, so... That might, not, might be my only choice. So let's see. It is my only choice, because the regular one... We'll try the regular one and see what happens. But if it doesn't pay well... Or doesn't turn out to be decent... Fuck a bunch of that. Anybody in? Nope. Right by the yeah. This is where having upward thrust is really nice. Landing couple of disengaged. 